I'm privileged to have as our guest on GNAT TV, one of America's most versatile actors. He has enjoyed success in television, in motion pictures, in commercials, in nightclubs, and in cabaret, uh, in musical comedy, in drama, and on Broadway many times, and in summer theater, where this summer James Norton is starring in a brand new show called Cedars, at the Berkshire Theatre Festival at the Fitzpatrick main stage. And James Norton, thank you so much for sitting with us. And tell me, tell me about Cedars. Um, it's about a guy who goes and visits, visits his comatose, intubated father, who's not conscious. And he pays obligatory visits to him once a week or so for, well, there are five scenes, so it's about five visits. And he sits and he talks to the guy. The, the old man can't hear him. And it's very smart, very, very intelligently written, and very funny. But it's darkly funny. Gallows room. Uh, we learn that the old man was abusive. His mother's crazy. His wife just left him for a younger man. And uh, his law practice is failing. So his, his whole world has kind of fallen down around him. What's interesting to me about the piece is it's an investigation of relationships, families. Um, this guy happens to have a, a pretty uh, uh, unfortunate set of cards that he was dealt. But uh, we all have families and we all have relationships with wives and kids and parents. and, and um, So the content is strong in this piece. And it has the advantage of being humorous as well. Uh, and ultimately, I think, quite moving. So it's a big hunk of, big, so, a big hunk of meat to chew on. So uh, the challenge being some of these issues in this person's life, these, these two people's lives, which have deep, deep gravity, but yet the humor that you indicate uh, is, is in the show. Well, that's what makes it, I think, en enjoyable. Uh, for a viewer, it makes it enjoyable, for, certainly, to read it, and I'm hopefully, to, you know, for people to see it performed. It's um, it's 90 minutes long, and it's kind of un unrelenting, but sort of a uh, exciting too. And it has a little bit of a thriller because it's got a, a, a twist that happens. In it. I think the material is really strong. So the show uh, Cedars, it's at the Berkshire Theatre Festival at the Fitzpatrick main stage and it runs from I believe it's July the 23rd through August the 9th and uh, it, it, uh, uh, it's a great evening and uh, Jim Norton when you enter into a production that is new uh, a launch a premiere so to speak like Cedars in comparison to a show that is a revival or has been previously performed with a, a track record, okay? Do you go into the, the new premiere with a different perspective on how to tackle it? What, what, what's your modus operandi there? I, I don't think really that there's much difference. I mean, you, you approach it the same way. Um, actors basically um, approach their work from the point of view of their character. It's a more subjective and narrower point of view. The director's job is to, to read everything that he can about, uh, if it's a revival, of, of other productions, so that he'll have an objective point of view and anything else that he can find or use. But basically the actor looks at it from the point of view of the character. And this is a one-man play, so it's really all about my character's name is Gabe, Gabe's perspective. Um, and, and uh, there's nothing to read about this particular piece. So uh, we've been in rehearsal. My director, who is my daughter, Kira, and um, the, the playwright, Eric Tarloff, and I. And uh, that's about it. And we were in there every day tr trying to figure out the best way to tell the story. But that's kind of what we do in, in, in every production. Now, you coming up here to the Berkshire Theatre Festival, uh, uh, obviously, you've uh, spent a lot of time over the years in summer theater, uh, summer stock. Uh, 
I was uh, had the privilege of seeing you at uh, the uh, uh, Williamstown Theater Festival talking about Nikos, the great executive producer, a couple of weeks ago and listening to uh, your passionate uh, comments. I mean, one could tell that you really have a love for this uh, summer uh, theater uh, and, and what it brings to you as an actor. I mean, uh, uh, any thoughts on that as to, uh, uh, you know, the difference between summer theater and Broadway, say? Yeah, well, we're not up here doing it for the money, you know. So we must be finding some kind of enjoyment or pleasure. Either that or we're just all masochists. Uh, it's a lot of work. But, you know, they call us the players. Actors are the players. And so I like to think that what we do is we play together. Uh, in this situation, I'm, I don't have, a, I don't have a, another actor on the stage with me, but I have this guy, this character, my father, who's supposedly lying in bed. And it's really between me and him. A lot of what I say is devoted, is directed toward him. Um, and uh, it's an opportunity to really exercise our uh, our acting muscles. I mean, you know, several years can go by when you might not do a play. And then you come up here and you work your brains off out in a very short, intense period of time. And that usually <laughs> is good enough for another couple of years. It didn't used to be that way. I, I spent almost every summer in the 80s up here in, in Williamstown. Uh, I discovered Kate McGuire in the Berkshire Theatre Festival a couple of years ago because uh, although it had been here forever, um, it wasn't really until my daughter Kira started working up here, she's done several plays here, that I came up and saw a lot of her stuff and got to know Kate. And she's quite an extraordinary artistic director, a, a, has a hugely generous spirit, big heart. That's what it takes to, to put something like this together and make it work for many years. I think she's been here 20 years. So I've been very impressed by her, and it seemed like a, uh, it, it's, a, it's a good place to come and spend, in my case, about six weeks here, working very hard and enjoying what someone referred to on NPR the other day as the Cultural Museum of America. So it's an opportunity for innovation it's an opportunity for trying out uh, rediscovery, perhaps, yeah. right? Yeah, all those things. Going yeah. back to your roots. Yeah. So. And um, it, has the, it has the benefit of being a, an, a really intense period of time. But it doesn't, it doesn't, you don't have to sign a six-month contract and do it eight times a week, which is what the Broadway experience is like. You know? And that can get a little old, the eight-show a week deal. Well, speaking of Broadway, I think that, uh, and correct me if I'm wrong or you feel differently, there was a period uh, generally where Broadway was looked upon as the gold standard in, in shows you, it was always what Broadway. And I think the perception of that today through technology has been more equalized in terms of theater. I mean, theater could be in other major cities, it can be here at the Berkshire Theater Festival. Uh, theater is relative, you know. Uh, well, I think it's still kind of a standard, particularly if you're a producer or a writer, because uh, to get to have a Broadway production means that perhaps there'll be some money involved and also there might be a life for that particular piece of work. Yeah in other places in the country. Once it gets reviewed, and that, that's a big deal for the writers, more than it is for the actors. Um, act, you know, we, we need to make a living, so that's a, you know, a part of the deal. But an awful lot of actors try to make their living in TV, or doing voiceovers, or doing something else, or, or an occasional movie. And then they can exercise their artistic muscles in, in a place like this. And, and that seems to work pretty well. I think also, if you look at the past 30 or 40 years, 50 years, you see so many more theater venues uh, in places uh, created by municipalities 
uh, and public uh, civic centers, uh, colleges and universities have built uh, beautiful theaters for performances. So uh, in terms of this equalizer of theater versus Broadway, I think that sort of figures into it too, right? All yeah, I, I think beautiful theaters, venues that... Well, also Broadway has shrunk, you know, in the past 50 years. It used to be hundreds of shows on per season, 75, 85 shows in a Broadway season. And now it's down to a couple of dozen, if that. That's partly the economics. It's also partly, as you mentioned, the technology. There's there are an awful lot of other um, technological distractions, TV and movies and now videos. Uh, someone was talking about uh, the All-Star Game, which was on the other night. And it used to be a, a huge number of people would, bet, would watch it. And these days, it doesn't happen. It's because there's so much going on. And there are only there's there's a lot of distractions. So. Uh, these things are the audiences for all of these things are, sh are shrinking, but that doesn't change the way those of us who practice it feel about it. You know, we'll, st we'll still do it. Practicing a craft. Yeah. So, James Norton, one of the Broadway productions you starred in about ten years ago, which I enjoyed immensely, uh, Democracy uh, at the time, it received uh, pretty good reviews from the critics. Uh, uh, but despite the artistic endorsement that it got, uh, I believe that from an economics and commercial perspective, uh, it didn't necessarily last on Broadway. It didn't make money like a lot of shows, uh, many shows fail to make money on Broadway. But what happens when productions enjoy a critically, uh, you know, good endorsement, validation, but the marketplace isn't supporting the show, or the timing of the year, maybe, or the period uh, is, is not right. Well, uh, a lot of things go into that. Uh, I think with Democracy, which was about uh, an ex-German Chancellor, Billy Brandt, um, I, I just don't think American audiences really um, cared enough about that situation. It was more successful in London, which is where it originated. Because London is in, in England, or you know, closer to the European community, and that political situation was more familiar to them. Uh, we had a situation on Broadway this past year. It was a wonderful show, a uh, really, really wonderful show, called Bridges of Madison County, and it, it was uh, artistically, it was as good as anything I've ever seen. Which was developed at Williamstown Theatre Festival. They did a production of it there last summer. Yes, uh, en route to Broadway. And um, it didn't succeed either, and uh, nobody can quite figure out why. Because the audiences who did come to see it really loved it. I, I saw it three times, and um, it was a it was a beautiful, really beautifully realized you know, love story. Uh, Jason Robert Brown won the Tony for best score, and it wasn't quite an exquisite score. Uh, but people, I think, thought, well, we read the book, we saw the movie, and we don't need to go see the show. But the show was quite different from quite different from the movie, and it was a heck of a lot better, frankly, uh, in my opinion. So these things happen, and uh, people take a bath financially, and it also hurts, it breaks a lot of hearts, you know, when, when something like that, like that occurs. For democracy, I think it was more understandable than it was certainly for the musical bridges, uh, but that happens every year, and sometimes the critics just don't appreciate something that the rest of us think should have been appreciated. Uh, lauded more um, vociferously. That, that's, that's so biz. Well, I remember when uh, Bridges of Madison County was here at Williamstown, mm -hmm. and the buzz was that this is really, this is headed to Broadway, this is going to be a, a, a winner, and, uh, you know, it... Uh, Artistically it was, and, um, and, and it didn't do enough business to stay open, which, which was a, a real shame. James Norton, with the impressive list of Broadway and off-Broadway credits which you have developed in your career, is there a type of play or a certain playwright, uh, a certain playwright's work that you haven't done yet, which at some point you'd like to undertake? You know, um, people have asked me my whole life, uh, what parts would you like to play if you could play anything? 
And I always said, since it, since I was a kid, because my first play in New York was Long Day's Journey and Tonight, the Eugene O'Neill opus. And I and I played Edmund uh, with Robert Ryan, Geraldine Fitzgerald, and Stacy Keach. And I always thought the old man would be a great part for me someday. And I'm at that point now where that would be about right. Uh, but that's a huge undertaking too. So we'll see. I, I, other than that, I haven't ever thought, well, you know, that here's a part I'd love to play. Um, you know, things come along. I didn't see this one coming, but I read it and I went, wow, this is really wonderful. I, this one, Cedars. Um, if we ever got around to doing that, I, I could get excited about that. It's a huge amount of work trying to learn this thing. I've been working on it for months. And now we're um, about six days away from the first public performance. And we're in pretty good shape. And again, balancing the humor with the depth of subject matter. Right? Yeah, well, that's, that's what makes it fun and also, uh, you know, I think, makes it accessible for people. If it were just, you know, if it were all stern and drang, that would be something else. I'll leave that to Bertolt Brecht. But uh, what Eric Tarloff has written, I think, is really exciting, dramatically and, and very entertaining at the same time. James Norton, you've done your share of television serials, certainly, like Law and Order. Uh, Blue Bloods, uh, Brooklyn Bridge years ago. Why in television, for the most part, does it always come down to the New York City police? Why? Uh, what's? Well, the key to drama is conflict. Where do you find conflict uh, in our society? Well, these days, everywhere. <laughs> but, um, yeah, that's one of the reasons. As an endless... I remember when, when I was a kid, after the life of Riley with William Bendix, there was a show called The Big Story. Yeah, which was yeah. Uh, there are a lot of there are hundreds stories in the on the Naked City. Naked That's City, all, sure. You know, so that's why. I just got through doing a, a show called Hostages on Broadway. I mean, uh, on TV. It was on CBS last year with Terry Tony Collette. I was playing the president. Uh, a season or two before that, I was playing uh, grandfather on um, Gossip Girl. Um, so we'll see what happens next. But uh, and that one actually wasn't about the cops. That was about rich kids on the east side of New York. Um, and apparently it was very, very popular among young people. You and I weren't the demographic for that audience. But, uh, it's fun to get these kids all of a sudden. I know you. You were grandfather on Gossip Girl. Yeah, that's right. James Norton. Uh, the changing venue of television, uh, the way it's evolving, where uh, Netflix and different online technology, ser digital services, are now uh, producing their own programs uh, where virtually anyone can create a video or a program via the internet or the, the web. Uh, as an actor, uh, how do you feel about that? Well, I think we're just in the beginning of that stage. Uh, it's starting to happen. Uh, people are, are writing little little shows, and they're putting them on the internet, you know, on some of the web pages, web shows. And there have been a one or two, I gather, that have been kind of successful, so I think we're going to see a lot more of that. And that's kind of wonderful, because it, it just means that it's, there'll be more creativity. And it, it won't take an act of Congress and four gazillion dollars to try to get something in front of people's eyes. So that, that can only help, uh, I think, society, really. And it's a good thing for the actors and actresses and directors. And <laughs> It'll just be another thing that actors can do and not get paid. So Maybe. Yeah. But we'll see. When well, you mentioned uh, Long Day's Journey into the Night as your first uh, Broadway uh, show, and when you look back over your career, uh, what were your expectations as a young uh, thespian starting out artistically, uh, was, did, it, did, it, did it turn out the way you thought it was going to when you look back to that period? Well, um, I came out of the drama school at Yale in, in, in 1970, so during that period that I, that I was there, it was three or four years in the 60s, um, we were a pretty hopeful and um, bunch, uh, I, idealistic. You know, we thought, I mean, I remember coming out of there thinking, what, what do I want out of this? I want to be, I remember saying, the best actor I can be. So here I am, 50 years later, almost, 45, 
And uh, what am I doing? I'm doing this show up here. You know, why? Because I'm still just trying to be the best actor I can be. Um, so that's good. Um, and it's been rewarding. And my kids are in the business, and they are doing well. And uh, I think that they're in it because they saw sort of the best of it. And this is this is the best of it. I've been doing it for these reasons. Um, I haven't sold my soul to the devils. And I'm in, in uh, well, in, in the, the old man in, in Long Day's Journey. His whole deal was that he had a he had a he was an actor, James Tyrone, the O'Neill father for some. And what did he do? He did the Count of Monte Cristo over and over and over again. And basically that ended his career, or that, that confined his career. And he, and he talks about it in the show. I could have done this, I could have done that. So um, I'm still cranking away here, trying to do good work. And that's about it. That's a very profound observation, James Norton. Uh, you, we talked about uh, your son and daughter uh, a little bit following in your footsteps and, and your career, and uh, they're both involved here this, this summer. And your daughter-in-law. Let's not forget her. Let's uh, let's mention her. Right? Kelly, Kelly O'Hara. Yeah. So. I like to I like to refer to her as the mother of my grandchildren. Oh. Um, she had, she and Greg have two kids, and uh, Greg's going to be directing the play that follows me in here on the main stage. It's a uh, hat full of ring, a wonderful play from the fifties. Um, Remember the movie Don Murray and uh, um, who was it? Uh, he. He's passed on. Uh, ben Gazzara? No, Ben was in the play. Yeah, he and Tony, um, he and Tony Franciosa. Tony Franciosa. We're right, in the original right. yeah, production. Right. And Eva Marie Saint. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah, so that's going to be a lot of fun, I think, for him and for the company and for the people here to see. Um, and Kelly, of course, who was star of South Pacific and Light in the Piazza and Far from Heaven and Bridges of Madison County. And next year she's going to, uh, up in New York, she's going to work in uh, an opera with Renee Fleming doing uh, Mary Widow, and then she's going to do uh, The King of Night on Broadway in like a year and a half. So exciting. So she's, she's got a lot going on, and she's fantastic. And she's as sweet and lovely a woman as she is talented when she sings. So your two children, did they want to get into this on their own volition, or... Uh, did you were you their inspiration and beacon or well, they, uh, you know they were raised backstage right literally right and you know they spent most of the 80s when their formative years um, in Williamstown because we were there every summer so they kind of saw the best of it with, with some of the best people working on the you know the best material Tennessee Williams Eugene O'Neill uh, I mean um, uh, Anton Chekhov well, those were the you know, Chekhov and Williams were the things that Nico Sakharopoulos the, the founder and our artistic director up there loved to do so. When you when you're a kid and you see sort of the best of it with some of the best actors that there are in the country every summer, it's it's pretty beguiling and, and seductive. And, you know, kids only have two choices: they either can go follow you, they either follow in your footsteps or they go in the opposite direction. And either one's okay, but these kids, my kids, came. They came. So. And now I'm having a wonderful time because Kira and I are collaborating on this on this new show together. She's a director, and it's wonderful having somebody out there whose eye you really trust, and she's really good. I want to watch a minute of uh, your new show, Cedar, and uh, we'll do that right now. Sorry, Dad. These people are driving me nuts. I asked a simple question. I just want some information, and instead they tell me what they think I want to hear. Straight answers must be a violation of the nurse's code. Most guys, I get the impression they are kind of brutal. So long, see, it's been swell. Me? I always suffered when I ended a relationship, more than the woman I was breaking up with, to be honest. Peter, hold on, my friend. Yeah, great to hear from you. I wonder why you disappeared. No, 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 it's fine. Hand to God, bored to death here. Nothing personal, but very important client. So, what can I do for you, Pedro? And she told me she was voluptuous. And that sent in front of too. I mean, don't get me wrong. Jessica's got a, a beautiful figure. That 
lean, gazelle-like body, the one you were ogling the, the day you met her. I've been coming here because I still hope for your approval. Is it not pathetic? As if it's within reach? As if it ever was within reach? Um, James Norton, one last question. What are we going to see from you looking into the fall and into the winter? I have no idea. Oh, <laughs> well, I have no idea. I hope I have a little more time in the fall to play golf than I'm having currently. Um, and part of the thing that's interesting and exciting and keeps you going in this business is you, know, you might not have anything on the horizon, but the phone can ring and bam, you, you can be off on a trip. You can be off on another whole um, adventure. And that, that happens. So um, a little downtime after this, a little golf time would, wouldn't be a bad thing for me at all. And I've got these three grandkids that are just delightful. And uh, I, I spend time with them. It doesn't get much better than that. Go see James Norton in Cedar at the Berkshire Theatre Festival. Uh, it's a great evening. And uh, uh, this is Danny Frank for GNAT TV.